Hey, what's up guys? Brian from Zombie Guitar here. Here in this lesson, I want to give a alternative approach to the cage system. All right? So, not that the cage system is a bad system or anything. I teach it all the time. I have lots of videos on it. Um, I practice it all the time. It's a great system. But the fact of the matter is it's just one of many systems. It's one of many systems that we use to uh, try and piece together this puzzle that we know as the fretboard, all right? So uh, in this lesson, I want to divide it into three parts. Number one, I want to uh, talk a little bit about what the ultimate goal is that we're all trying to achieve of this understanding of the fretboard. Uh, the second part of the lesson is going to be me explaining the alternative system, which I refer to as the video game system. Okay, I just kind of made up that name because it's kind of like a video game approach to fretboard mastery fretboard mastery you're never actually going to master it you can never stop improving but you know what i mean so that's uh, the second part the third part of the uh, lesson is going to be um uh, me just doing like a five minute long demo of me actually applying this video game approach thing all right so uh before we get started i always just like to say check out my website if you haven't already zombieguitar.com lots of cool stuff i've been working on it for over three years now and i don't plan on stopping anytime soon Lots of free content, videos, written lessons, all that stuff, courses, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. Check it out. I think you'll like it. With that said, let's start the lesson. All right, so the ultimate goal of the guitar, in my opinion, is uh, can be broken down into four distinct layers. So let's say that uh, there's a chord progression that we want to solo over, and it's in the key of A minor. All right, so let's say the chord progression is an A minor chord, G major chord, F major chord and a C major chord. So those four chords are all in the key of A minor, but the chord progression lands on the A minor a lot, starts on the A minor, ends on the A minor, so it's in the key of A minor. So if we want to approach soloing over that progression, it could be broken down into four layers. And those four layers are number one, uh, the A minor pentatonic scale. So you want to have the ability to not only solo in just one position, but you want to be able to solo up and down the entire neck of the guitar within the A minor pentatonic scale, uh, being able to hit all pentatonic notes on demand, okay? Not hitting any incorrect notes that are not part of the pentatonic scale. You want to have full control over that A minor pentatonic scale all up and down the neck. Uh, the second layer of the puzzle would be the A minor diatonic scale, otherwise known as just the A natural minor scale. So the uh, diatonic scale is just an extension of the pentatonic scale. The diatonic scale is contains seven notes. The pentatonic scale contains five of those seven notes. But those five or seven notes can be found all up and down the entire neck of the guitar. And there's all kinds of systems put in place. You know, you can break it down into seven diatonic positions or five diatonic positions or look at each pentatonic position and then adding in some extra notes to each position to create the diatonic scale. You could uh, associate a mode with each chord and then, you know, associate a, a pattern with each mode or something like that. So there's all kinds of systems in play, but ultimately it's the A minor scale. All right. So Second layer of the puzzle is you want to be able to play the A minor scale up and down the neck, not hitting any out of key notes, and at least not by accident. You want to have full control over this ability to play within key. So that's the second layer. The third layer is uh, targeting the chord tones of the underlying chords. So as I said, there's an A minor chord, a G major chord, an F major chord, and a C major chord in this progression. As each chord is occurring, the best sounding notes to play within the A minor scale are going to be the chord tones of the underlying chord because that's going to keep your playing sounding the most connected with the rhythm. All right. So I talk about that. I have lots of lessons on uh, chord tone soloing. I'll post some links to that below if you want to check those lessons out. All right. And then the fourth layer of the puzzle is going to be uh, intervals. So not only do you want to have the ability to target the chord tones at will, of the underlying chords within the progression, but you also want to have the ability to target the intervals that you are aiming for. For instance, if you have a chord progression that goes something like this. So 
So there's a C major chord in there. So maybe on that C major chord, maybe I'm just noodling around the, in the scales the whole time, but, but I want to really focus on targeting chord tones as that C major chord is occurring. Not worrying about chord tones for any other chords, but just that one, I, I might want to do it. So on the C major chord, maybe wherever I happen to be on the fretboard, noodling up and down the different patterns, whatever, uh, I want to be able to hit the note C as the C major chord is occurring. So that's something I may want to practice. Um, or maybe I want to hit the third of the C major chord. So the third of the C major chord is the note E. So if I hit the note E as the C major chord is occurring, it's going to give me a different type of melodic uh, control over my playing. Uh, also, or if I wanted to hit the note G, the G is the fifth of the C major chord. Okay, so those would be the four layers of soloing over an in-key chord progression. All right, so this is, you know, this is a pretty simple chord progression to solo over because everything's in key. Once you start throwing some out-of-key chords into the mix and key changes and stuff like that, different rhythms, different uh, time signatures, things can get really complicated. All right, but just soloing over a chord progression that consists of four chords that are all in the key of A minor, there's really not much more control that you can get other than those four layers. You have the pentatonic scale, then you add in your diatonic notes to play the full diatonic scale, then you target the chord tones, which is the whole purpose of this cage system, so you know where the chord tones are at any area of the fretboard, and then intervals, being able to know precisely which interval of the chord that you're attempting to hit as that chord is occurring because that will give you the exact sound that you're going for that you have in your head. So four layers, we spend our entire lives attempting to improve these four layers. The cage system is just one of many. So uh, with that said, let me give you uh, what I call the video game approach. All right, so this video game approach here is I just made up a nine level video game. You can make up a 10 level video game, a 15 level, five level, whatever you want. Just make up some levels. Now in a video game, uh, pretty much depending on what game you're playing, but you don't move on to the next level until you've completed the previous level. So don't allow yourself to move on to level two until you've completed level one. Don't just jump ahead to level eight until you've completed levels one through seven, all right? That's basically how this works. So each level of my nine-level video game that I made up is uh, gets increasingly more and more difficult as each level happens. All right, so basically I just have a looped chord progression. The chord progression goes like this. It just loops over and over for five minutes, ten minutes, doesn't matter. Whatever length of time I want to loop it for, I just jam over top of it, and then I apply these nine levels. So the nine levels are number one, let me see, I have them written down. Uh, first, I want to practice playing each individual uh, pentatonic position. So pentatonic position number one, solo over top of that chord progression, pentatonic position two, three, four, five, one, and so on, or you want to go this way, pentatonic one, five, four, that's, uh, that's the first level. Practice that, get really good at that. If you're just starting out, that may take you six months, who knows, I don't know. It, it's different for everyone, everyone's starting at a different point, all right, but again, we all have the same ultimate goal. So that would be level one of my video game that I made for myself. Uh, number two would be, uh, sliding between pentatonic positions. So, let's say I'm, uh, playing in pentatonic position number one, and then I jump to pentatonic position number five right here, and then I kind of jump back and forth between the two. And then I want to go to pentatonic position number two, and then jump around, and then slide between those three positions. And then I want to jump up here and play in position number four, and then jump down here, and then up here, slide back and forth, just sticking strictly to pentatonic though, not adding in any extra notes. I want to have full control over the ability to play within the A minor pentatonic scale up and down the fretboard and just think of it as a, a holistic thing instead of instead of just uh, five separate positions because it, it, it's all connected together. It's all just one scale spanned on the fretboard. So sliding back and forth in between pentatonic positions would be my uh, second level to my video game. Uh, the third level would be to then target the note A. Um, 
within these pentatonic patterns. No matter what pattern I, ha I happen to be in, target the note A. And I'm going to do so over the chords that are uh, lasting the longest. So in the progression that I'm playing, the A minor chord and the F major chord are the chords that are kind of playing the longest because it's going... So the A minor chord and the F major chord are the chords that are kind of going the longest. This, the G major chord and the C major chord are a little shorter. So I want to try targeting the note A over the A minor chord and over the F major chord. And now the A, the note A is a chord tone of the A minor chord, obviously. Uh, the note A is also a chord tone of the F major chord. The uh, note A is actually the, uh, the third of the F major chord. So that note's going to sound good over both of those chords. So as I'm noodling around, sliding in my pentatonic positions, jumping from one position to the next, doing whatever, I want to try and target the note A. There's A's found in many different spots up and down the fretboard, so that's my target note for those two chords. So that's going to be my third level to my video game. The fourth level is I'm now going to try and target the note C. All right, so again, C is a chord tone of both the A minor chord and the F major chord as well. So if you're the A minor chord has the uh, chord tones A, C is the third, and then E would be the fifth. The F major chord A is the th um, third, and then C would be the fifth of F. Okay, so noodling around in my pentatonic positions, I want to try and target the note C over the A minor chord and over the F major chord. And I can still target the note A also because that was from the previous level. All right, see how this is working? So that's level four. Uh, level five is um, now I'm going to add in the diatonic notes. So now instead of just playing the pentatonic scale, I'm going to play the entire A minor scale up and down the neck of the uh, guitar. Whatever system I happen to think about to, to make that happen, seven diatonic positions, think of a, of a modal pattern applied to each chord, um, five pentatonic positions with some extra notes added, whatever it takes to, to, to play in key up and down the fretboard, A minor, uh, A natural minor scale is the scale I want to be playing in. I, I want to be always hitting in key notes um, and also sticking with what I just did in levels three and four. I want to be targeting the notes A and C as the uh, A minor chord and as the F major chord are occurring because I just did that, so I know where the A's and C's are if I have successfully completed level three and level four. All right, so that's level five. Level six is um, adding in the diatonic notes, which we just did in level five, and then targeting the note E. So E would be the third chord tone of the A minor chord. All right, so uh, there is no E in the F major chord, F major is F, A, and C, but the A minor chord has the notes A, C, and E. So we already did the A's, we already did the C's. E is the fifth of the A minor chord. So I'm not going to, I'm just, for the F major chord, I'll just focus on A and C. For the A minor chord, every time it lands on an A minor chord, I want to try and land on the note E, wherever I happen to be. Okay, so that's level six. So, um, Level 7, 8, and 9 are going to be, I'm now going to um, focus on when it gets to the C major chord. All right, so the chord progression again goes like this. So when I get to the uh, C major chord, level 7 is, I'm noodling around in my uh, A minor uh, A minor diatonic scale, wherever I happen to be. Whenever that C major chord occurs, I want to land on the note C. That's the root of the C major chord, um, and then I can still do what I what I did in the previous levels for the F chord and the A chord. Level seven is focus on that note C as the C major chord is occurring. Level eight is to focus on the note E as the C major chord is occurring because uh, E is the third of the note C, so it's going to give that different melodic sound. Okay, so now we're focusing on specific intervals. Of a, uh, of a chord within the progression that's kind of moving kind of quick. Um, and then level 9, uh, focus on targeting the note G, which is the fifth of the uh, C major chord. So as the C major chord is occurring, 
target that note G. And, uh, you know, so that's my nine level video game. You can keep going with this. You can add 10 levels, 15 levels. You can do one for each of the chords until ultimately you get all the chord tones. But this is just a fun, you know, like I, I can spend five, 10 minutes doing something like this. And by the end of the five or 10 minutes, I'm really going to get a lot accomplished because each of the subsequent levels is going to look and feel much, much simpler once you know, say I'm up to level 7, and I'm really good at levels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and I'm having trouble at level 7. I'm kind of getting stuck there. But all the previous stuff, that's nothing, all right, because I've already mastered those levels. So that's my video game approach, all right? So you can take this uh, concept and make up your own type of video game approach with it if you want. But, um, you know, I'm just going to do like a 5-minute long demo of me basically applying those 9 nine levels to my made-up video game, and you can just kind of watch me noodle around on the guitar. There will be mistakes. I'm, I'm not, um, you know, I'm, I'm far from a master at the guitar. Uh, I'm constantly trying to improve my uh, my own playing and my own understanding and my own fretboard mastery. But, you know, if you want to watch me noodle around for five minutes, trying to hit each one of these nine levels, that's what uh, this next part of this lesson is. So uh, check that out. Okay, so that was just a quick demonstration of me applying this whole video game concept that I'm talking about 
where the ninth level or the final level of my particular video game that I set up for myself was about targeting specific intervals of, uh, of a specific chord within the progression. Okay, so like I said, there's four layers of the guitar. You know, you have the pentatonic scale, you have the diatonic scale, you have chord tone targeting, then you have specific intervals of the chord tones to target. So, you know, that was just a very, very abbreviated version of how I might go about starting out. Easy to me, noodling around the pentatonic positions is, is easy to me, but targeting specific intervals within the cage shapes is something I'm not super, uh, you know, I'm okay at it, but it's something I'm trying to uh, better myself at. You may be at a different spot. Maybe you're at the point where you're just... Um, you know, the pentatonic, the five pentatonic positions and jumping around from one to the next, that's something that maybe that's where you're at. So maybe you would set up a different type of video game approach with your final level being to, um, you know, jump around from position to position and slide between one and the next fluently, which for my particular video game, that was my level two. That may be your level nine, you know, maybe you're even beyond me, you know, maybe you're at the point where, you know, you're, you're targeting ex extensions of the chords, you know, you're trying to target ninths and elevenths and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, everyone's at a different spot in their uh, fretboard journey or their journey to understand this big puzzle that we know as the fretboard. The concept of this video game approach, though, I find is really helpful, so no matter where you're at in your journey, uh, you know, maybe you can uh, take this and uh, apply it to yourself. And uh, that's going to be it for this lesson. Um, if you're a full access member, I will have some um, we'll have some video backing tracks for you to uh, practice along with. Do some chord tone targeting, practice pentatonic, practice diatonic over that chord progression that I was uh, noodling around over. All right, so um, that's going to be it for this lesson. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. <laughs>